Hey, Algebra 2. Um, in previous lessons, we used transfer transformations to prove that all parabolas with the same distance between the focus and directrix are congruent. Um, right now, we're going to talk about them being similar. So we're actually going to talk about all parabolas are similar. Yep, I mean all parabolas are similar. Um, Parabolas may not seem to have the same shape, which means they're not going to be congruent. But because a parabola is an open figure as opposed to a closed figure, like a triangle or a quadrilateral, it's not easy to see similarity among parabolas. So um, the term similar um, is strictly defined via similarity transformations. So in other words, two parabolas are similar if there is a sequence of translations, rotations, reflections, and important to say dilations, which makes them look not similar, um, that takes one parabola to the other. Okay? So let's get into some meat of this. Um, you're going to need either graph paper or desmos to look at these things. Um, but, yeah, I, I could make you graph everything, but that is a long and tedious process. So Desmos is going to be your friend. Okay, first of all, um, in your exercises, it says write equations for two parabolas that are congruent to the parabola given by y equals x squared. And explain how you determined your equations. So I just came up with a few. Um, let's see, which one is this? This line right here is going to be y equals um, x squared minus 3. And if you see, it just, the vert, so, oh, sorry, I should tell you the first one. This is our original, y equals x squared. Um, y equals x squared minus 3 just takes your vertex and goes down 1, 2, 3 points. Um, and then we have this one over here. That is y equals x minus 2 quantity squared. And when it's x minus 2, that just means that our vertex goes to the right two points. So the shape is completely the same. Um, the distance between the vertex and the direct, or sorry, the focus and the directrix, everything else is, is these are congruent. Okay, the next two, write the equation of two parabolas that are not congruent to y equals x squared. Explain how you determined your equations. Um, let's see, this first one, I think I did it in red this time. Yep, so this right here is y equals x squared. Um, I, I know that if I put a number in front of the x squared, that it sort of shrinks or stretches my parabola a bit. So that's what I'm going to do. I think we learned last lesson that y equals 1 over 2p times x minus h squared plus k. Um, this right here is what I can easily mess with to change my parabola. So let's see, which ones did I use? Oh, that is wrong. Let me erase this and tell you I'm actually in black. Which one is y equals x squared? It's that one right there. Okay, the one inside of that is y equals 2x squared. And then the one on the outside is y equals one-half x squared. If you remember, the smaller the denominator is, the more spread out your parabola becomes. Um, the bigger this number, the tighter the parabola is on the y-axis. Okay, what does it mean for two triangles to be similar? How do we use geometric transformation to determine if two triangles are similar? I typed it out because it was a lot of writing and I didn't want you to have to decipher my writing. Um, two triangles are similar if we can transform one onto the other by a sequence of rotations. 
reflections, translations, and dilations. Dilations, that's where things get skinnier and wider um, when, they, when you dilate them. What would it mean for two parabolas to be similar? How could we use geometric transformation to determine if two, tra if two parabolas are similar? Um, two parabolas should be similar if we can um, transform one onto the other by a sequence of rotations, reflections, translations, and dilations. Dilations, that's where they don't look similar anymore, or they don't look congruent, but they are still similar. Okay, use your work in exercises one through six to make a conjecture. Are all parabolas similar? Explain your reasoning. Um, it really depends. It seems that any pair of parabolas should be similar because we can line up the vertices through a sequence of rotations, reflections, and translations. Then we should be able to dilate the width of one parabola to match the other. Okay, hold on a second. I'm going to bring in some graphs. Okay, I graphed y equals x squared. Basic, basic y equals x squared. And I um, changed my x and y axis, my viewing window, a few times to just prove a point. So this right here is negative 10 to 10, 10 to negative 10, y equals x squared. Okay, that's what we usually look at. Well, if you look at my x and y axis, I changed it from <laughs> negative 50 to positive 50, and I'm up to 100. Um, it's the exact same graph, but it looks really, really skinny. And then I zoomed in really, 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 really close and got this parabola that is really wide and flat. Um, these are actually congruent, even though they don't look like it. And um, I just wanted to sort of show you that different scales on the horizontal and vertical axis just change how we view the parabola. The images are just a di they, they look to be a dilation of the original. Um, when the scale has changed. So I just wanted to show you that. So um, let's see. Okay, we're on exercise eight. So in this exercise, we're going to drive the analytic equation for the parabola, which we've done before. Um, so let's go ahead and do it. I may need another sheet of paper here, but the parabola it, at right is the graph of which equation? So let's come up with an equation. Um, what does the definition of parabola tell us about the distance between the point x, y and the directrix L and the distance between the point x, y and the focus F? Um, we have been told that these are congruent. Um, so if I say let x, y be any point on the graph of P, then these distances are equal. Ooh, I don't know what that is. because P equals, that's the set, that's awesome, my set notation, XY such that XY is equal distance from F and L. If you remember, in a lesson, we tried to measure this using a ruler. Um, it was difficult to do, but just pointing out the fact that any point on this parabola, the distance to the directrix and to the focus are equal. If I just look here, I'm one, two, three, four boxes, one, two, three, four boxes. So this distance and that distance are equal. So create an equation that relates these two distances. So first of all, I would look at the distance from xy to f, the focus. And I've got x, oops, I'm not sure what that is, x minus 2 quantity squared plus 
y minus 0 quantity squared. It's our distance formula. And then we have the distance from xy to l. And that is just x plus 2. Just bringing that graph back in there so we can see it. Um, I've got any points on the parabola. The distance from xy to f is going to be x minus 2, x minus, or y minus 0. That's our distance formula. And then the distance from xy to l is going to be x plus 2. Okay, so we have the x plus 2. Let's solve this equation for x. Actually, I have to set up the equation to be equal to each other first. x minus 2 quantity squared, y minus 0 squared equals x plus 2. And I actually would have gotten rid of this pretty early, so let's rewrite that y squared. So I'm going to push pause and do some algebra. I'll be right back. Okay, there's our equation. I just squared both sides and then solved for x. Um, so to write it in function notation, our parabola equals a set of numbers xy such that x equals 1 eighth y squared. Find two points on the parabola P and show that they satisfy the equation found in part D. Sorry, I needed the graph again. It's fine. We got point two four just by finding it, and then two negative four. Plug it in and see what happens. So x equals one eighth times four squared. That'd be sixteen over eight, which is two. That works x equals 1 eighth times negative 4 squared 16 over 8 which is also 2 that works it satisfies the equation All right. do you think that all parabolas are similar yes I mean they all have the same basic shape they open up they open down they open left they open the right they can just be rotated translated reflected um, and dilated so what could we do to show that two parabolas are similar? How might you show this? Since every parabola can be transformed into a congruent parabola by applying one or more rigid transformations, perhaps similar parabolas can be created by applying dilations, which is a non-rigid transformation. Dilations is the only thing that isn't rigid that changes the shape of your um, parabola or the shape of anything, really. So let's try a few. All right, using the graphs, um, suppose the unnamed red graph on the coordinate plane is the graph of function g. So the red one is function g. Describe g as a vertical scaling of the graph of y equals f of x. That is, find a value of k so that g of x equals k times f of x. What is the value of k? Explain how you determined your answer. So the graph of g is a vertical scaling of the graph of f by a factor of 2. Therefore, g of x equals 2 times f of x. k equals 2. By comparing points on the graph of f to points in the graph of g, you can see that the y values in all g are all on G are all twice the va y values on F. So I just grabbed a point. On G, I went over 2 and up 8 and found this. Okay, so that's on the G graph. And if you go over 2 and up and hit the F graph, I'm just at 4. So that's how we see that G of X is 2 times F of X. Okay? Number 10, suppose the unnamed red graph on the coordinate plane is the graph of a function h. So the red one is h. Describe h as a vertical scaling of the graph of y equals f of x. That is, find a value of k so that h of x equals k 
times f of x. Explain how you determined your answer. So the graph of h is a vertical scaling of the graph of f by a factor of a half. Thus, h of x equals one half f of x. By comparing points in the graph of f to points in the graph of h, you can see that the y values on h are all half the y values on f. Let's show you. So if we look here, I went to h and I went over to up to, I have a point, 2 comma 2. If I go over 2 to hit f, I'm going up 4. So h of x equals 1 half of f of x. Okay, my y value is half of the y value on f. Okay, um, if you looked up, so look at some marked up drawings for vertical scaling for those two exercises, it's exactly what I showed you, just um, drawn really pretty and nice and neat on paper. <laughs> So check those out. All right, number 11. Suppose the unnamed function graphed in red on the left coordinate plane, as it really isn't left or right, sorry, is G. Describe G as a horizontal scaling of the graph of Y equals F of X. What is the value of the scale factor K? Explain how you determined your answer. So the graph of G is a horizontal scaling of the graph of F by a factor of 2. Therefore, g of x equals f of 1 half x. By comparing points in the graph of f to points in the graph of g, you can see that for the same y values, the x values on g are all twice the x values on f. So let's get an example. So for the same y values, the x values on g are all twice the x values on f. Um, so we looked at the same y value, which was 4, and g is twice f. Number 12, suppose the unnamed function graphed in red on the right of the coordinate plane is h. Describe h as a horizontal scaling of the graph y equals f of x. What is the value of the scale factor k? Explain how you determined your answer. So the graph of h is a horizontal scaling of the graph of f by a factor of half. Um, h of x equals f of 2x. By comparing points in the graph of f, f to points in the graph of h, you can see that for the same y values, the x values on h are half the x values on f. So we can grab a few points. Looks like these will be the best. Um, so for h, I'm at 1, 4. I said uh, h, I wrote f. And then for f, we're at 2, 4. So the same for the same y value, my um, x value is half of the x value on f. And we see the marked up values. Um, it's exactly what we found. All right, so definition. A dilation at the origin d of k is a horizontal scaling by which k is greater than 0, followed by a vertical scaling by the same factor k. In other words, this dilation of the graph y equals f of x is the graph of the equation y equals k um, f of 1 over k x. Okay, yikes. We'll use it in our homework, and it should make really good sense. So let's try an example of that. Um, so let f of x equals x squared and let k equals 2. Write a formula for the function g that results from dilating f at the origin by a factor of a half. So we have g of x equals 2 f of 1 over 2 x. This is what we just wrote down. Um, k, that's messy. k f of 1 over k x. Since f of x equals x squared, the new function will have the equation g of x equals 2 times 1 over 2 x squared. See how we just substituted there? Okay, we can simplify a little bit and say g of x equals one half f of x, or sorry, one half x squared. 
Okay, what would we do for k equals 3? g of x equals 1 third x squared for k equals 4. g of x equals 1 fourth x squared, etc. We could keep on going. 1 fifth x squared, throw you a loop. k equals 1 half. When you put 1 half into the denominator of a fraction, it comes back up to the numerator, and that's how we get the difference. Cool. Okay, so based on this, what can you con conclude about these parabolas? Um, that just means that they're all similar because they represent dilations of the graph at the origin of the original function. Um, is this an enough information to prove all parabolas are similar? No, um, not really. We've only proven these specific parabolas are similar. Um, to prove that all parabolas are similar, we'd have to use the patterns we observed and make a generalization and then like algebraically show that it works in the same way. It'd be a lot of work, but it's possible. Okay, let's do some work to try to prove that all parabolas are similar. Um, I'm going to try to prove that these four different types of parabolas are all similar to y equals x squared. We're going to find an appropriate dilation about the origin. So we're going to do a little bit of generalizing, but it'll all make sense. Um, so we know what y equals x squared looks like. We've done that one a lot. That's just at the origin. Um, pretty basic parabola. In lesson 34, we talked about this particular form for a parabola, where p is the distance from the vertex to the directrix. Sorry, I just had to look it up. What I'm reading right now says vertex to directrix, but I was pretty sure in lesson 34 we learned that it was focus and directrix, and it is, I found it, so there's just a little mistake here. Um, all right, so what were we doing? <laughs> so if we have any parabola that we can rotate, reflect, and translate it, so it's vertex, vertex is at the origin, and the ax axis of symmetry is the y-axis. Um, so we're going to just show you that all parabolas in the form y equals 1 over 2p x squared are similar to the parabola y equals x squared, and I shouldn't put an equal sign. Let's fix that. Um, all right, so to do this, we're going to apply a dilation at the origin to the parabola y equals 1 over 2p x squared. Let us just remember what we just did today. Um, y equals f of x. The graph of y, y equals f of x is very similar to the graph of y equals k f of 1 over k x. So, so if we do a little bit of substituting, okay, we know that f of x is equal to 1 over 2px squared then the graph of x is similar to the graph of the equation y equals k f of 1 over kx. So if I substitute um, right here, I've got f of x equals 1 over 2p, and then x squared is 1 over kx squared, right? So let's simplify that, and I get um, k over 2p times 1 over k squared x squared. So these cancel and I'm left with 1 over 2p k x squared. And I'm running out of space again. So we want to find the value of k that dilates the graph of f of x, 
1 over 2px squared into y equals x squared. So let's choose the dilation factor k so that y equals 1 over 2px squared becomes y equals x squared. So our value of k it looks like it's going to have to have a p in it. So basically we want 1 over 2pk to be equal to 1. So let's solve this for k. I'm going to multiply that up. 2pk equals 1. k equals 1 over 2p. That was pretty simple. So let's go ahead and substitute that. I've used too much space again. So therefore, if we dilate the parabola, y equals 1 over 2px squared about the origin, a factor of 1 over 2p, we have y equals k f 1 over k x equals, this is all that we've done, k 1 over 2p 1 over k x quantity squared equals 1 over 2 p k x squared <laughs> And we just said, oh sorry, k equals 1 over 2p. If I plug that in, k equals 1 over 2p. Those cancel. I am left with just plain old x squared. So we've shown the original parabola is similar to y equals x squared. And I hope some of that made sense. Okay, there we go with our lesson summary. I'd read through it, and um, we'll start our classwork, and hopefully everything will become really, really clear, which would be great.